Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to pick up where I left off in the last video where I connected to a Mongo database using PyMongo. So in that video I did a very simple insert at the end. In this video I'm going to cover the typical CRUD operations. So what I mean by that are create, read, update, and delete. So I already have something of a create here with these two insert statements and I'll modify them a little bit so we can see how we can change it. So if I look at my collection here, I have four users in the collection. And what I can do is I can add new users. So let's say Emily and Frank. And then I can add some more information to them. So I'll add a language for each one. So Python for Emily and for Frank, let's say C. So if I save this and go to my app, my index, I should add these into the database. So added a user. If I refresh here, I should see the two users. And I do. So I see Emily in Python and I see Frank and C. So now that I've added more to the database, let's try searching for something in the database. So we'll create a second route and we'll call this one find. And I'll name the function find as well. I'll use that user collection again. So mongo.db users. And then I will search for a user. So in this case, I'm going to assume that the names are unique, but that doesn't necessarily need to be the case. But for me, I'll say user collection dot find one. So I'm looking for one specific user and I pass in a dictionary that is going to be used for the search. So it needs to have the same key name and then whatever name I'm interested in looking for. So let's say Emily and I'll return this to a variable called user. Next, what I'll do is I'll print out information about Emily. So uh, let's see, return, make this an F string. It's going to be wrapped in headers. And we'll say user is going to be Emily. So or not Emily, but user and the key, so name. So the user that gets returned here is just a user object and it should have a name and maybe a language on it. So I can look at the name here and then I can get the language. So language, so user language, just like that. And I'm using double quotes for the dictionary keys because I already have single quotes for the string itself. So let's go ahead and try this out. If I go to slash find, I see user Emily language Python. If I change the name from Emily to Frank, it should change a bit. So find, and then it should say Frank, and then C, and it does. Okay, so that's how you would find a specific user. Next thing we want to do is we want to update a user. So we'll create another route and we'll call this one update. I'll start by creating the user collection again. And then what I want to do is search for user first. So it's going to be the same. So I'll just copy this. And then I can update something on the user by using the dictionary. So user language, I won't update the name because the language or the name is supposed to be unique. The language can change. So instead of Frank having C as his language, we'll change it to let's say JavaScript. And then I can return something just saying that it was updated. So I need to do one more step, but this will be the end. So updated user. And before this actually updates into the database, what I need to do is I need to use the user collection, call the dot save method on it and pass the user that I want to save just like that. So user collection dot save user. So we're searching for Frank here and we have the update here. So first thing I'll do is I'll run find again and we should see Frank in language C, which we do. Then I'll go to the update route. So update, it says updated user. Now when I run find again, I expect to see that Frank is associated with JavaScript instead of C and he is. So I updated the language. I can do this one more time. I can do this for Emily instead of Frank. So let me just update this. So I'll change Emily's language from Python to let's say Ruby. So server restarts. So first I'll find to see the before. And
And here, if we look at the database, we see Emily and Python. My connection is slow at the moment, so it's taking a while. Let me actually restart my server. Okay, so find Emily. We see language is Python. Then I'll go to update. It says update a user. And if I find again, it says Ruby for the language. And of course, if I refresh, so right now it's Python. If I refresh here, it should then say Ruby, which it does. Okay, so we've covered how to create data or insert data. We've covered how to read the data, how to update it. The last thing we want to do is delete the data. So let's say we want to delete Frank from the database. So I'll call this one delete. Get the user collection again. And then search for the user. So find one name. Frank. And then I'll call the user collection and I'll call the dot remove method on the user collection. And I'll pass in the user that I found, which is Frank. And then what I'll do is I'll return deleted user. Okay, so the server restarts. So we see here Frank is in the list. So there are six records. And if I go to delete, it says deleted user. So now when I refresh this, I should see five instead of six, which I do. So Frank is no longer there. If I want to remove Brian, I can do the same thing. Just update this to be Brian and then run the delete endpoint again and then refresh my database. And we see Brian is no longer there and I only have four users left. So those are the really basic operations that you would perform on the data in the database. Of course, there's much more you can do, but you'll always be doing some variation of these. And then, of course, as your app grows, you probably will do something more than that as well. So that's all I want us to cover in this video. I'll probably create more uh, PyMongo videos, at least to update the ones that I did before. So if you have any questions about anything I did in this video, feel free to leave a comment down below. Uh, if you want the code to this video, I'll have a link in the description so you can get that. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.